Hey everyone, I hope you're all well and having a nice day. Today I'm going to be doing the rereader tag for you, which I originally saw on Books and Quills channel. I will link it down below for you. And basically you sort of talk about books that you have reread countless times over either as a child or an adult, and um, also books that you want to reread but are kind of stopping yourself from doing it because you have a lot of books to read already. See behind me for evidence. And yeah, so I'll just get started. And some of the first books which I kind of reread a lot are the Harry Potter books, in particular um, the first three, so Philosopher's Stone, um, Chamber of Secrets, and Prisoner of Azkaban. The Harry Potter books just hold such a special place in my childhood. I was obsessed with them, and um, it sort of really brought me closer to a lot of my um, sort of childhood friends because we all loved them and would, you know, reenact our favourite parts and sort of discuss the stories, collect the chocolate frog cards, watch the movies together. So I guess there's that kind of element as well. I feel like it really sort of united a whole bunch of like-minded people. And also, you know, there's a whole, it got people reading and even if, um, I knew a lot of people who weren't really that into reading and they still enjoyed these books, so I think that really sort of speaks volumes as to just how um, much of a kind of impact they had on my generation's childhood. And they're just such magical stories, like, I guess you could say J.K. Rowling is probably the Enid Blyton of our generation, and they're just wonderful books, and I will probably continue to reread them throughout my life because I just love them, and... There's just something so special about escaping into the world of Hogwarts, even if you didn't get your long lost acceptance letter. Another book that I want to reread, but I'm stopping myself from doing that, is The Fault in Our Stars by John Green. I probably read this maybe three or four times last year, and I just love this book. It's such a beautiful story, um, incredibly sad, of course, but it's just one of those books that I feel like. A wide range of people would enjoy it. Of course it's um, aimed at young adults but I feel like adults would probably enjoy this as well. It's a really touching story and it's quite funny as well and amongst the sadness of it all but it really sort of gets you thinking and just remembering how sort of um, how important it is to kind of you know make the most of what you have in the present day and to kind of never take anyone for granted. You know everyone that comes into your life is kind of there for a reason and it's a blessing and it sort of just gets you thinking and I don't know it just made me feel a lot more grateful for um the life that I have and the fact that I don't have any kind of you know major illnesses or stuff like that going on in my life to complicate things further but yeah I really like this book and I highly recommend you read it if you haven't already. Another book which I've been wanting to reread and I feel like it's probably because Golden Globe season is approaching, well it's tomorrow actually, um, so it will have been yesterday by the time you watch this video, and that is Gone Girl by Gillian Flynn, um, my goodness, this book is just brilliant, it's just such a brilliant book, the twist I had no idea was coming at all, I didn't read ahead or anything, I didn't cheat, I had made sure that my friends did not give me any spoilers or whatnot before I started to read it. And it was just great, and the way that Gillian Flynn portrays women and their complex and sort of very unpredictable personalities was just very well done, I guess. And even with the guy characters, you know, um, I like that it's not just a clear cut, one person is bad, one person is a villain. There's kind of multiple villains at play in this book, which I think is particularly, um, important because you know the discussions that take place around what happens when people um project particular characteristics or ideals onto someone else and the potential sort of downside of that and like the um kind of negative implications that come about of that i just thought that whole discussion was really worthwhile particularly in this sort of media driven day and age that we find ourselves in and yeah, I really love this, and I'm definitely going to reread it before I go back to uni. Another book that I actually bought last year in Wellington is An Extraordinary Vary of Objects by Stephanie LaCava, and I'd read this from the library the year, uh, no, it would have been last summer probably, um, 
and I'd been wanting to read it again but it wasn't until I saw it in an actual bookshop here that I remembered how much I enjoyed it and wanted to pick it up again for myself. It's basically about an American woman who, as a child, her family moved to Paris. I can't remember if her father is, um, her father has quite a sort of high profile job. I, I want to say he's like a spy or something, but that's possibly wrong. Um, and so the whole family sort of gets whisked off to Paris and her character, not her character, Stephanie has a thing about collecting stuff and just sort of all the sort of history behind it and what um, the meaning is of it and stuff and its origins and yeah so basically her um, memoirs are told by the objects that kind of were around at that time in her life or during whatever incident she was mentioning and it's just really cleverly done and it's definitely a bit of a more sort of quirky book that I'm actually rereading at the moment of it. Lemony Snicket's A Series of Unfortunate Events books. These are the first ones, um, The Bad Beginning and The Reptile Room. These, again, like Harry Potter, played such a big part of my childhood and I feel like I kind of came in onto these books when um, I was sort of waiting for new Harry Potter ones to be released and they're just so cleverly done. The stories, I, like, I, I love that the stories don't have a happy ending and aren't, you know, all sugar-coated kind of stuff and I think that's what makes them so appealing to so many children is they have a sort of you know more darker side to them and you know they're not they're not about like happy endings and romance and whatnot um they're also the language and like the way he sort of makes sort of humor and incorporates language and plays with it is just so well done and I feel like they probably would have gone over my head when I read these as a child but reading that again now just makes me appreciate just how talented of a writer um, Lemony Snicket or Daniel Handler as is his real name is and yeah I really love these books I'm looking forward to reading the other 11 that I've yet to finish. Another book that I've been wanting to reread for a while is Looking for Alaska by John Green. Again I probably read this book last, no, I read it at the end of 2013 um, and it's very sort of perks of being wallflower it's books, you know, the characters are all at the boarding school are all kind of outsiders, and again, that's something I can really kind of connect to, because, you know, I never felt like I fit in at school at all, and just reading that sort of stuff is really refreshing, and just, John Green is just such a talented writer, and I feel like it would be impossible for anyone to not enjoy at least one of his books. And After the Fault Now Stars is probably my next favourite, so I would recommend picking this up if you haven't yet done so. Another book I sort of purchased with the intent of rereading is Pretty Honest by Sally Hughes. This is just a great kind of book to have on hand, whether you're a beauty novice or a beauty pro. It sort of covers everything. It's so much better than all the other kind of beauty how-to step-by-step -step guides out there. It tells you everything, how to deal with counter stuff. Um, and it's very honest, very to the point. It's, I love it, and I will probably reread it countless times over so I can make sure I have remembered the useful information that is in it. And last but not least, we have Ellen DeGeneres' book, um, Seriously, I'm Kidding. This came out, I don't remember, two or three years ago, maybe. And it is hilarious. It's a good one to kind of pick up when you're not having a particularly good day and just need something that's going to make you smile and laugh which, let's be real, Ellen's show does, so it's not really surprising that her books have the same kind of effect. Um, this is Laugh Out Loud Funny, and I highly recommend getting your hands on it, and if you're having a bad day, be sure to pick it up, because it will instantly brighten your mood. So that's all the books I kind of want to reread, or reread on the regular. I hope you did enjoy this video. Be sure to give it a thumbs up if you did, and subscribe if you haven't already. I would really appreciate it. And if you have any video suggestions or um, videos that you want to see on this channel, leave them down below because I am always looking for ideas of what to film for you guys. And yeah, I hope you have a good rest of the day and I will see you next time. Bye guys!